usually on a boat test, the first thing I do is to go out and sail and then deal with the accommodation and all the other stuff afterwards. But I'm going to change it this time for good reason. Come and have a look. Now, the reason why I wanted to start off down below is because on this boat, it's very easy to get the wrong impression from the start. After all, look at the layout. I mean, what could be more straightforward? Double cabin forward, two double cabins aft, a conventional U-shaped saloon, seating here, a chart table, an L-shaped galley. Heads there, heads there. It's all pretty straightforward. It's only when you get under the skin of this boat that you start to realise what the concept's all about. And that concept is A, not reinventing the wheel, but B, making use of modern materials, modern techniques, and let's face it, modern looks. But here's a few quick examples. At one end of the scale, we've got leather clad handrails. At the other, on the options list, you can have this entire boat, hull, deck and rig, made from carbon. I bet you weren't expecting that. But for all that down below, this is what really counts. And I have to say right from the start, what a boat. It's so light on the helm. It's absolutely beautifully smooth. Look, finger light control. We've got about 13, 14 knots of true wind. We're going upwind at uh, 29 degrees, apparent wind angle, and we're doing eight knots. We've got a blade, a blade jib, or a non-overlapping jib, full main. It's absolutely beautiful. Everything is set up in the right place for you as well. I have an assistant here, of course, Simon, who's trimming the main. But actually, earlier on, I was sailing along here with my legs either side of, of the wheel, and it's so easy for the helmsman to get close to not just the main sheet traveller, but the main sheet itself, which is both on this side and on that side, with electric controls for the winches as well. And it's superb, because it means that from behind the wheel, you've got complete control of the boat. And even if you had to go forward to ease the jib, you can just get there, no, no problem at all, straight through the wheels and you can get to it. It's a very, very nice setup. Okay, ready? Okay, tack in now. So again, if I'm sitting here, we've got a ferry just to windward of us, and so classic situation where you need to bear off. I can just come forward, just let the traveller down the track, and even let the main go, just to ease off. Bear away, stay out of the way of the ferry. All done without ever having to stand up, leave the wheel. To me, it's the perfect way to go cruising. You need to have control close to hand. Then everybody feels relaxed and comfortable. The other controls in the rest of the cockpit are very much as you'd expect to find them, with a conventional pit, if you want to call it that, either side of the companionway hatch. So halyards and other controls happen from there. But I have to say, it's, it's a lovely, lovely boat to sail performs really well, it's incredibly light on the wheel, it's dead easy to handle. I'm just going to come up behind this, behind this ship now, we can afford to head up a bit, so I might just take it up the Traveller first, I think, make it easy for myself. Pull it up the Traveller, put on some main sheet, come up onto the breeze, and we're there. It really is as easy as that.
fact of the matter is, is that the Arcona 435 is a sailor's boat. Of that, there is absolutely no doubt. She feels beautiful on the helm. She sails incredibly well, whether you're going upwind or down. She's so well balanced, so easy to manage, and the deck layout, well, it's sort of, at times, it verges on a racing deck layout. You can see that quite a few things, like some of the jib cars, the tracks, the in-haulers on the jib sheets, those are all things that you'd expect to find on a race boat, not a cruiser. But, as anybody who's raced and used those systems will know, it's what allows you to sail through a big wind range with a minimum of effort. And that is what this boat is all about. So Simon Rosier here is the agent and has very kindly taken us out for the day. And what a day it's been. The sea breeze has been building. We've probably got the best part of 20 knots now at the sea breeze. And we've got full headsail, full main, powering along at uh, 10 knots. She's quite a boat, isn't she? She's so well behaved. Yeah, well, that's the mark of uh, uh, an Arcona. Um, the late, great uh, Stefan Kreberg um, always designed right the way through the ages and through our current range, a really well-balanced boat, primarily. You really notice that because even, I mean, we've been pushing her far harder than you probably would when you're cruising, and yet yeah. it doesn't feel gripey at all on the helm. It almost feels like it's got twin rudders, which is quite unusual nowadays for, for a boat that's so beamy at the back to feel that well balanced. Yeah, it's, well, it's a, a deep spade rudder and the sail plan complements the, the, uh, the underwater profile very well. Who are the kind of people that are buying and being attracted to Arconas? Where are they coming from? What have they got in mind for their cruising? Um, the common denominator for, for most Arcona owners are um, recently retired, just sold my business. Um, also people who, um, <laughs> dare I say, have been passed so many times by an Arcona uh, <laughs> that they want to see what it's all about. And people who want to go further afield as well. And I suppose one of the other things that strikes me, and probably the overriding thing, is that this is a very modest looking boat, isn't it? She's a modern boat, but not garish. Not, she's, she's not trying to shock you into liking her at all, is she? No. I mean, we often hear the words contemporary classic on this particular model. Um, its predecessor, the Arcona 430, and hugely popular, uh, was European Yacht of the Year in 2009. Uh, this was the, um, the obvious upgrade after listening to owners and dealers alike, and this won European Yacht of the Year in 2019, but it's actually quite a, an accolade. So, we've established that the Arcona 435 is a pretty cool boat under sail, and under power for that matter. But let's have a closer look at what makes this boat tick on deck. And I'm going to start with the aft lockers down here because they're huge. Two lockers, one just under there, one here. Great big lockers that you can get a dinghy in, you can get fenders in, warps, plenty of space down there. That's pretty cool. So a nice wide cockpit, a feature of the modern style for beamy boats aft. But here's a clever feature. Take that out. Lift that up. Do that. Up it comes. And out comes the table. Pretty neat, eh? The pit area is pretty straightforward, rope clutches, port and on starboard with the two secondary winches. This one on the starboard side is actually powered. But there's some quite nice little touches again, and that is the ability to cross sheets. You've got these turning blocks on either side, which means that you can take one line across and use another winch. Particularly useful if you're wanting to use the powered winch on lines that are on this side. Very popular on race boats, not so common on cruising boats. Good to see it on this one. Uh, another nice little feature is the rope tidy bins down here, down in the combings, which is really nice. Somewhere to put the tails so they're not just dangling down inside uh, the saloon and getting in the way down there. So a nice arrangement here. 
plus with the cover the, the spray dodger has got its own recess that it can go into keeps it nice and tidy and out of the way the main sheet system is what's commonly referred to as a german main sheet system in that it has a tail that goes down each side from here but in this case it goes around a turning block in the deck and again runs under the deck which keeps the side decks nice and clear and clutter free so you're not skidding around on ropes all the time the Genoa cars here, well, it's a non-overlapping head saw because it's got a full width chain plate base. So obviously the clue can't get much further than here. Short tracks here with car pullers here. Another thing that I really like, be familiar with a lot of racing people, less familiar on cruising boats, but still a really useful thing to have because it means that you can move the car backwards and forwards from the safety of the cockpit. That means you can change gear easily. And that's all good news. And whilst talking about changing gear, the thing that did actually surprise me is that this boat comes standard with in-haulers. These are basically rings that will pull, that you can pull inboard to tighten the sheeting angle on the head saw, which gives you yet another gear. Now, I don't want to labour the point about details that you might normally find on a race boat that happen to be on this one, but here's another detail. Soft shackles on halyards. Instead of having the normal stainless snap shackle, this is a soft shackle that uh, you just basically open up the loop there and pull the knot through. And then you pull that through and it tightens itself up. And it's a really nice way of attaching to the top of the sail because you've got plenty of articulation. It's light. It's not going to smack into anything and do damage. It's pretty neat. Now, to add to the long list of things and details that I like on this boat, here's another. All it is is a locker, you may say. It's a forward locker and it's big enough to take the asymmetric sail or whatever downwind sail you want. Now you may say, so what? But you might also be surprised at how many cruising boats there are around now that don't really have anywhere to stow a big sail for downwind. And when they do, it's often down at the back of the boat, which means it's a real work up to get it forward and then you can't get then you don't really want to put the kite up and it's all too much effort. Here, it's exactly where you want it. And it's particularly interesting because this is a modern style boat with a fine forward entry. So you would have thought that there wasn't enough room for a locker like this, but it's huge. They've got a big asymmetric in here and the gas locker and plenty of room for fenders and all kinds of other stuff. I like it. But given that this boat was designed and built in Sweden, one of the features up here that is very un-Swedish is to have an anchor off the end of a fixed bowsprit. Because in Scandinavia, quite often, they more bow to and have the anchors on the stern and they literally step off the bow. But this has got a fixed bowsprit, room for the asymmetric to tack down onto the bowsprit and a really nice snug system for stowing the anchor. So taking all of that into account, you might not be surprised to hear that I quite like this boat, but it's more than that. I think the Arcona 435 is superb. Really, really nice boat. Modest, understated, beautifully built. The craftsmanship down below, it might be simple and straightforward, but it is just beautifully put together. It sails really well. It handles incredibly well. The performance is really good and it's confidence inspiring. It's difficult to know what else you'd want out of a 43-footer.